Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature Event, checking in with Team 1082X Glitch. Phenomenal team and a robot. You may have uh, heard of Glitch, of course, from their performances last year as well, too. Did absolutely phenomenal. Think Award at Worlds last year. Congratulations on that. Plethora of uh, design awards, innovative awards in their history as well, too, and have been doing absolutely phenomenal this season as well. Take a look at 1082X's robot. I love the overall design. Of course, we'll be talking about just how compact this robot is. It, it might be the smallest robot here in the field. It looks phenomenal to me. Uh, we going through some of the different iterations they've been doing. Of course, they're a catapult area, some cool ratcheting systems. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Paul, let's start out with the uh, ratchet system your robot and the motor configs for it as well too. Love to hear more about what's gone into it. So one of the biggest things here on a robot is this two motor ratchet, uh, motor share system between our slapper here and our intake. So here we have two separate ratchets. So it, within this big gear, there's this small 12 tooth gear. So this gear can free spin on this axle so that when it spins in one direction, this can free spin and let our intake spin forwards. But when it spins in the other direction, the ratchet spins backwards and it fires. And then we have this second ra ratchet down here on the bottom, so that when this goes down, it's able to stay down. Once it gets far enough down, it releases. When you were looking at a design of your robot from the overall uh, structure of it, what, why was it so important to have a ratcheting system on your robot as well too, when you're just looking at the overall packaging for your machine? So the main reason we decided to do this motor share system is so that we could have more power for our ratchet. So when we were doing our tests with only having one motor, it would, we, wouldn't, we weren't able to have enough rubber bands on it to get it consistently across the middle barrier so that so when we had both motors, we were able to put enough rubber bands on it to get it consistently over the middle barrier and then so that we could be able to have an intake, we put that double ratchet system on there so that we can intake and launch. Yeah, I love the versatility that goes into it. Brielle, we got to talk about the uh, catapult on your robot and the ratchet release that goes into that as well, too. So talk to me more about uh, your catapult design. How quick are you uh, doing match loads as well, too? Love to hear more about it. Yeah, okay, so what we originally had was a, a catapult. This is actually called a slapper. So uh, the catapult, um, it would, as you can see, like this goes about this far back. The catapult went a lot further back, so that uh, increased our cycle time. And, uh, and the, for this game, you want a shorter cycle time because obviously for match loads, you want them going across the field as fast as possible. So we actually have now a slapper, and some of the ways that we've improved the, the time and just overall functionality is changing these gears from 60 to 84 tooth. That allows it to uh, draw back just a little bit more, just a little bit more force. We also have these 24 tooth gears back here, which provide a little bit more weight. And as you know, like force equals mass times acceleration, so this also provides more force. And then we also have, through testing, discovered that this one rubber link allows for the most contact with a tri ball at one time so that it gives even more range. And then another feature that we have, kind of going to our ratchet system, is what we have a ratchet release. So this is actually a, this really small new piston that Vex has. And then if you can see it down here, the, where this rubber band is, it can pull back the ratchet right here to release this in case it gets stuck. Because that's one of the main problems we had at our very first competition, was the ratchet just kept breaking during matches. And so this ensures that in case that happens again, we can always just release it and then it can just go back up again. Carson, let's start to wrap up on this robot, talking about the uh, wings that you have. And then, of course, we got to talk about the sizing of this tiny machine as well, too. Uh, you know, when you look at small robots, uh, small is cool, but there's so much that goes into the packaging of getting it that small. So talk, talk to me about uh, both those things. All right, so for our wings, we have a l locking mech. So we have these pistons extend that push our wings out. And a lot of teams just leave it at that and don't have any locking mech and when the piston retracts so does the wing but what's special about ours is that this standoff 
when it extends, will go into place in front of another standoff, and it'll lock, so it's not requiring any force from the piston to extend. And then when we retract the piston, it'll still go back. However, if you push on it when it, it's extended, then it'll just go into the standoff and it won't apply any force to the piston. And so the other important thing about our wings, well, one of two, is these sleds. Because our center of gravity is so far back, we were not able to use our front sleds to go over the barrier. We would just get stuck. But when we added them to the back, uh, it allowed us to get our center of gravity over the barrier and onto the other side, allowing us to go over. And then also these ball bearings, which allow us to strafe along the walls. So instead of just having to turn, this means we're able to drive along the walls more smoothly. And so for the overall size of the bot, we have a very small drive base. It's, I believe, 25 by 25. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, that's, that's right. It, that really doesn't leave a lot of room to do, to do much. So as you can see over here, our entire side of our drive base, which is the main mounting point, is covered up. And this was a struggle in several ways, including um, placing our brain, which we originally had back here, our battery, which we've had to hide under here, all, and all our pneumatic components. Looking to the future uh, for other events you may be attending, uh, any other big iterations that are kind of first on your list of that you want to look at changing? Possibly talking about trying some other launching methods, including possibly flywheel and then maybe an elevated version of our slapper here. Um, while that may change our ratchet system, it would help us through being able to shoot over other teams' blockers. Awesome. Well, 1082X once again coming out of Texas. Uh, phenomenal last year, phenomenal season this year so far. I can't wait to see, of course, how you do here at the uh, Speedway Signature event. So thanks a lot for telling us about your robot. Good luck the rest of the season, of course, here at the Speedway event. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.